Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and for today's video I'm working on a Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And since I've done a few other Buffies with voiceover, I thought this would be a good opportunity to do my Q&A rather than my regular voiceover. So on a previous video and on Instagram, many of you submitted questions for this video. Thank you all for your submissions. And if anyone has any questions for my next Q&A video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. So let's get started. First from Selena on YouTube, she asked, when, when you package your dolls, do you put them in custom packaging or do you make them or do you have them made? So I'm always on the lookout for new and better ways to package my dolls, but I've used the same method since I first started. It works pretty well, but I'm not 100% happy with it. What I do is I use a clear wine box from clearbags.com clearbags.com and I'll put the link in the description box below um, they're 12 inches tall which you know they would hold a bottle of wine so that's the perfect size for dolls it also leaves a little bit room for my puffy hair dolls <laughs> and they're clear and sturdy so my clients can use them to display and protect the doll if they'd like um, and how I package them is that I wrap them in bubble wrap and then I strategically wrap the rest in tissue to protect the face and the bubble wrap kind of fills the lower part of the box so that the doll doesn't move around and, and risk damage to like the face and eyelashes. And then I put it, uh, put the clear box into a sturdy mailer box with more bubble wrap. And it, like I said, it's not 100% perfect, but I've shipped a, probably a few hundred dolls with this method. And I've only had one or two max minor mishaps where the eyelashes lifted a bit. So it's not 100% perfect, but it's working pretty well for me, I think, with only a couple out of a few hundred. So next from Dorothy on YouTube, she asks, how many dolls can you do using a can of MSC? So when I first started, I remember only getting about two or three dolls with a can, and that was just crazy because I was sealing after like every little thing I did. But over time and as I got better, I needed to save my work less, and I understood when to seal it better. So now I do four coats in the beginning, and then in between, like right in the middle, I'll do two other coats, and then at, for the final coats, I'll do four or five. And then if I follow this method, the can will go a lot further, and I can usually get about ten dolls with a can. And sometimes I can get more because I'll spray the body with another brand called Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, and that should be in the description box below as well. And if so, I do body blushing on all of my dolls, whether or not they're fully clothed. But I'll only use the MSC UV cut on the body if it's going to be exposed. So if I'm using MSC only on the faces, it'll go much further, of course. Um, so from Native Doll on YouTube, I saw your supply list has quite a lot of pencils. Which ones would you recommend for starting out? So I would actually recommend getting the best pencils that your budget will allow and the reason well with a lot of art supplies or a lot of other art um, types of art you would typically start as a newbie with inexpensive supplies while you're learning however with face-ups the better the supplies I think the easier you'll find it it is and the easier you'll make it on yourself so if you're starting out and you can afford it I would recommend Karen Dosh Museum Aquarelle because they're the very best and the easiest to work with in my opinion. I use them anytime I get frustrated and have trouble with the colors showing up, but they're very expensive. And with that said, I do have some great news though. So I recently did a review on Arteza pencils, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. And they're an excellent value around, I think it was $30 to $35 for a huge set of 70 pencils. And I was totally shocked to find out how well they worked and I've actually been using them a lot since. So I definitely recommend them. So I have an affiliate link for both of those products in the description box below, but it's, it, um, and if you purchase through those links, I get a small commission, but that doesn't affect what I'm saying. They're definitely, um, this is definitely an honest review. They're both awesome products. So um, I think the Karen Dosh is much better, but Arteza is, is pretty comparable to a lot of the pencils that I use regularly. So definitely get those if you are looking for something. Um, next, Sharon on YouTube asks, do you wet your brush a little bit when putting on the pastels? I've never heard of that and I don't and I don't use water with pastels. I've never heard of using water with pastels and I don't think that it would work really well. Um, and and I, I don't use any water or wet down anything when I do my work and I don't use any paint on the face other than the couple of highlights I put in the eyes before I seal it with the Liquitex gloss sealer. 
Um, let's see. From Sunflower on YouTube, she asks, why don't you just use actual pastels, as in artist pastel chalks, and rub them on kitchen, a kitchen towel to make them into powder? Much cheaper, I bet. So I use, I used to use mainly um, Schmincke, Rembrandt, and Sennelier pa pastels, and did something similar to that. And I would rub, I would rub them across sandpaper, and then pick up the pigment from there, and that works great. Um, I still do that sometimes, depending on the color that I need. But these. Um, pastels uh, are pretty much the same price as my beloved pan pastels that I use all the time now so I don't believe that would save any money um, so if you're looking to save money it would be cheaper to do that as you described if you were purchasing cheaper pastels um, but in my opinion cheaper pastels don't typically have the soft and beautiful blend ability as the more expensive brands so I don't like to use them I just get better results with the better products so let's see. So from Marta on YouTube, she asks about how long did it take before you felt confident enough to start selling your dolls? Um, I actually was not confident at all when I started <laughs> selling my dolls. I was just lucky enough to have a supportive partner. He actually listened to me or listed listed my first doll for sale. And when it sold, he gave that gave me confidence to keep going, I guess. Um, but I would tell anyone who's thinking of selling that if you like how it looks, it's likely that someone else will. And sometimes you have to wait for that person who just falls in love with your doll to buy it. So make sure to be posting on social media and everything and get it out there um, if you're having trouble selling. But if you if you like it, you should give it a shot. Um, and if that's what you ultimately want to do is sell your dolls. and. And if it doesn't sell right away, don't get discouraged. Keep trying, and in the meantime, keep improving your art techniques so that they'll get better and better. And you know, also in the meantime, just have fun. I think you should definitely just give it a shot if you're looking to sell. So let's see. So from Villa Nell on YouTube, what is the most important thing to get right with the eyes? She mentions she's having trouble with getting them not to look cartoonish and uneven. So for help with making them even, I would say take your time, draw a little on each eye, like rather than draw one eye and then the other, just draw what like the upper lid on one eye and then the upper lid on the other and just keep looking at them, hold it up in front of you and away and then away from you and then from all angles after you draw like each line and then take a photo because I oftentimes see that in, I see things in the photo that I didn't when I was looking right at it. And then, you know, erase and fix it if you, to, until you get it right and keep looking at it. You just have to take your time, especially at first when you're first learning. Um, so I, I, I often find things also, if I take a picture and look at it later, I find that I see things in the photo that I didn't see while I was looking right at it. So that's a tip there. Um, for the cartoonish part, I, I mean, I would just say keep working on them, even when it looks complete, adding shadow and shading, and the more detail, the better also work on making the lines thinner in some areas instead of just big thick lines sometimes we do like outline the eye in one big thick same same width line and if you thin the lines out in certain areas then it can make it look more realistic so hope that helps So I may only get a couple more in, so I'll definitely have some for the next video if I don't fit all of these questions in. But the next one, some I have a couple that don't have names on them, but someone asked if I purchase dolls new or if I get lots, and they mentioned that this could be a problem with Monster High and Ever After High since they are discontinued. And that um, is definitely a concern. I always purchase my dolls, purchased my dolls new in the past and I always found tons of sales, so I have a huge stock of new ones, but Yes, I've had to start buying lots of them where I can find them since they're discontinuing. I'm super sad about that because I love these doll lines, but there, um, there are a lot of customizable dolls out there that I can use. I not only work on Monster High and Ever After High, I do pull-ups, Blythe, Animator Dolls, Cuckoo Harajuku, um, and there's several other types of dolls that I'm wanting to try. So um, while I may not be able to use the dolls that I like the most, I'm still going to continue this uh, art with other dolls as in, in other new lines that may be released as well, hopefully. So uh, another, 
This one was a question that I got in a couple different ways. So basically I was asked, is it okay to copy other doll artists work? Like my, can, can my work be copied? Um, and this was on Instagram and there was a post going around about it as well. And a lot of people were confused. So my take on this is for my videos as a general rule, if the video title says tutorial, it's okay to recreate it. If not, then the video is intended to share my art and give doll tips, but not to be like recreated and copied. Um, I have seen some other artists use my videos to create looks that were intentionally similar to mine and they tagged me and said it was created using my video and that's perfectly fine. If they were selling it though, that's not really cool. I'd, I'd encourage you to come up with your own style or, you know, or your own design. Um, but as far as character dolls, like Cindy Lauper or Frankenfurter and so forth. I don't own the rights to those characters, so of course you can make it your own. I would say that you'd want to make it in your own style and not try to copy the way that I made it um, or make it look exactly like mine. But again, if it's your own um, for your own use and you're not selling it, I mean, there's not much I could say about that. Um, but this is just my opinion and, and good art etiquette, in my opinion. And you know, a lot of work goes into creating original pieces of art and coming up with new artistic ideas. And it's really challenging when an, an, another artist, um, it's really challenging to create, create something new and different. And when another artist um, recreates it, it's kind of defeating. So, um, so you can get tips from and be inspired by other artists, but I just wouldn't copy their work. Um, let me see if I can fit in one more. Uh, let's see. How do you get the pencil pigment to apply smoothly and stick? And there's one other person who's having trouble with their sealant. I think I can get this in in the last few pictures that are being seen, but um, it's it's all about proper sealant. Do your spraying by holding it eight inches away from the doll, back and forth once, very light light bursts, and do it do it three times to start. And let me know if you have any questions on that in the description box below. I'm running out of time. I hope you, these, these answers to these questions were helpful. If you have any more, let, let me know in the description box below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you need to have any follow-up questions, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.